Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a clinical psychology doctorate student. I make videos about real world applications to psychology, so teaching you how to apply psychology to your life. Go ahead and hit like and subscribe if you want to see more of that and hit the bell notification button to get notifications about every new video. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Gabby and Carlos from Desperate Housewives. Someone recommended doing a series on Desperate Housewives and that made my life because I love rewatching it and this gave me a great excuse to start it over again. And do let me know if you have any other suggestions about characters or certain relationships from Desperate Housewives that you want me to cover. So in this video specifically, I'm gonna be looking at Carlos's character as kind of a, an example of machismo, and Gabrielle's character kind of as a figure of anti-marianismo. I just want to state up front that I'm not Latina, I'm Romanian, I have a great, a great deal of respect for Latinx culture, and I've learned a considerable amount about it since starting grad school, I've done some projects on Latinx culture, but that makes me no expert on Latinx culture, so if I get anything wrong, please feel free to correct anything in the comments if you disagree with any of these statements. So let's talk about Carlos from the perspective of machismo and just generally kind of toxic masculinity. So if you don't know what machismo is, it's basically an ideal traditional sense of manhood, particularly in the Latinx culture, although we kind of see this type of masculinity in other cultures as well. So in machismo, the man is the protector. He's strong, he protects his family. He also does caballerismo, which is chivalry, in which you protect the ones that need protecting. And there's also a darker side to machismo, characterized by violence, inability to express one's emotions other than rage. Rage is kind of, as we know in American culture as well, seen as the only acceptable emotion for men to display. And this idea of machismo also contributes to a very stereotypical idea of Latino men. So it's definitely not at all the case that Latino men are more violent or more toxic than other types of men. But this is something that's often used against them is that, oh, well, Latinx men are just, they're so macho, they're just trying to be so rude to women. And machismo can also be linked to insecurity and perceived threats and hypersensitivity to those threats. Kind of like in what American culture is considered fragile masculinity. So you guys, I'm gonna be honest, I fucking hate Carlos. I think he's so sexist, he's such a pig, but I'm gonna try to be as objective as possible in this video, even though he's my least favorite character on that show. And I can understand that, you know, people kind of gain sympathy as the show gets along. He definitely gets a little bit more likable, but I still don't like him. So one thing that we see is that Carlos really objectifies Gabby. So I think it's even in the first season he says, you know, if Tanaka wants to grab your ass, you let him because I made a lot of money off of him last year. That's not an okay thing to say to a woman. It's very objectifying. It's very, you know, treating her as a commodity, as something to be traded for money. He also really disrespects Gabby's personal autonomy, um, specifically her bodily autonomy. He is what we would call a reproductive abuser because he messes with her birth control pills and gets her pregnant against her consent. He also tries to buy her, buy her off with presents instead of fixing their issues, which kind of shows that you know he's not really willing to talk about emotions. He just kind of wants to brush her off to the side. He also beats up any man that's suspected of having an affair with her, which is not a very constructive way to deal with infidelity in one's relationship. He's borderline violent with Gabby at times and he manhandles her a lot, um, which is definitely not okay. He's also very traditional, so he expects Gabby to take care of the house at some point when his mom suggests that she start to do the maid's work. But he also displays caballerismo, so it's not all bad. For example, he's really protective of Gabby when he finds out about her trauma history and about her mother not believing her. So why is Carlos like this? Well, we see his mom slaps him when he starts crying when he's expressing how he's worried about losing Gabby, which definitely suggests that he was not permitted to emotionally express himself growing up. The rage kind of was the only emotion that was permitted for him. And that, you know, as a man, you have to be tough and not show any weakness or otherwise you're not a real man. And we also see that his dad was arguably abusive and yelling at him as a baby, which definitely suggests some attachment issues, as well as some possible anger that he hasn't addressed. Now, Gabby is kind of the opposite, which is, she's the opposite of Marianismo. And Marianismo comes from Maria, you know, the mother of Jesus. So in a, in a way, it's kind of like being la santa de la casa, the saint of the house, 
where you're expected to be perfect and pure and virginal and to constantly make sacrifices and put others before yourself. The positive traits of Mari and Ismola is that, you know, they value loyalty, compassion, generosity, self-sacrifice in women, which can all be great things in the right context. The dark side of Mari and Ismola is that they don't allow for women to be independent or self-sufficient or to occasionally put themselves first. And to expect that a woman be the saint of the house is not a reasonable expectation. And it makes me think of a lot of the Madonna complex issues in Italian culture as well, where, you know, you're either very saintly, very much like the mother of Jesus, or otherwise you're completely dirty and you're not a good woman. Another issue is that bicultural Latina women or, you know, Latina women who have immigrated to more Western cultures can find it difficult to make sense of their identity and to kind of negotiate their identity when they have one foot in Marianismo and one foot in American culture that tells them a very different story, that tells them you have to be independent, you have to be self-sufficient, you have to put yourself first or otherwise you're not empowered. And you know, if you behave too American, then you're not Latino or you're dishonoring your family. So I imagine it's very difficult for Latina women to negotiate these expectations and try to be empowered themselves while retaining some sense of cultural identity and while acculturating to their new culture. Because if you do behave too passive or too submissive in American culture, or what's perceived as too passive or submissive, then you're considered disempowered. So how is Gabby an anti-Marianismo figure? For one, she doesn't want kids. So that's very, you know, against the traditional Marianismo ideal where you're kind of expected to bring kids into the world and that being your main role. She also has no interest in taking care of the house. She's not particularly hardworking. She's a little bit selfish and childish in that she just wants to go shopping and spoil herself, which is definitely not in line with the self-sacrifice component of Marianismo. She's also not loyal. She cheats on her husband and she definitely puts her own needs first. In terms of her cultural identity, we see this in a later season, but she doesn't really identify as Latina or Mexican. And she kind of sees it as now that she's a different socioeconomic class than when she, where she came from, she can also kind of let go of her Latina identity because she kind of associates that with poverty. And so it's almost like she loses sight of where she came from because of the newfound privilege and because she now doesn't have to deal with a lot of the obstacles that Latino people in the US do unfortunately have to deal with. So why is Gabby like this? We know that she was sexually abused by her stepfather when she was an adolescent and that her mother didn't believe her, which suggests that she had to learn from a young age to be independent and to be self-sufficient and to only really rely on herself because she thought that other people were just gonna let her down. It can also explain why she stays with Carlos, who in my opinion doesn't treat her very well. She kind of got this message growing up that men aren't gonna treat her well and you know, no one's gonna stand up for her. So this is kind of familiar to her. So finally, let's just talk about some takeaways from this pair. When interacting with Latinx individuals, whether it be clinically in a clinical setting or just, you know, in real life in the outside world, just be aware that these forces of machismo and marianismo could be playing a role. Now, I'm not saying assume that this is an issue for every person of Latinx descent, not at all, but just be aware and be mindful that if they do bring up these things, they could be at play. And people could be grappling with both pleasing their family and pleasing the new culture that they've come to, which can be difficult and may require that you support them. Also, don't let any of these concepts be used to oppress people. So don't let machismo be used as an excuse for sexism against women or, you know, a Western perspective on machismo as a way to oppress Latinx men and demonize them and vilify them. And don't use these as stereotypes, you know, don't assume that all Latinx women are submissive, that all Latinx men are oppressive, and so forth. And finally, remember that both machismo and marianismo do have their positives. So they, there are some great values in there. So try not to judge people if they do abide by these values because there's a reason they're so prevalent because there's a reason things used to be this way where the man was the protector and the woman was kind of the child rearing compassionate person. And sure, times might've changed and Personally, I don't tolerate sexism no matter what culture it comes from, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't respect these values if they're not necessarily harmful. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.